Hello again, this is uh, Gary and Winora coming to you today from his pasture as we celebrate together the Lord Jesus Christ in worship celebration. We're delighted for you to come today. This is for the service of July 18, 2021. Now, I, uh, I slowed that down a little bit because uh, my secretary inadvertently uh, wrote June uh, 18th. And, of course, uh, whenever you're hunkered down in your home and community, uh, you kind of lose a little bit of sensibility as to time. And so, to be certain, today's message is for July 18, 2021. Anyhow, we're delighted for you to join us today, and I hope you've brought your Bible with you and your, your uh, pen and paper and uh, are ready to take notes or to follow along in the scriptures. And as we begin, our tradition is, without wanting it to become a tradition, we want to open up in a word of prayer inviting God to have his way in our hearts and lives today. Father, we bless you and praise you for bringing us to this hour, vital for our strength and for our witness as we want to be doing the work of God. And we bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so this morning we're going, you know, after pastoring so many years, invariably, whenever I got up to preach, it was always morning. So you must please oversee what I say sometimes whenever I give references to time. Uh, because it's not always morning now, uh, as uh, we're delivering this message. Uh, but uh, at this time, we're delighted that you've come to share in God's Word. I'm going to share with you a, a passage, uh, actually several verses of Scripture, that I believe is paramount in the day in which we live. Many are running to and fro. Many are extremely fearful and anxious about tomorrow, have a great uncertainty, and I hope that today's message will actually bear witness to you in the need that you have in your life to understand, at least in part, what may be taking place, but how you can be victorious regardless what is happening in our society, or our neighborhood, or our country in which you live. The work in, and, and will of God is described in two verses found in the book of St. John. In John 5, 17, the scripture says, But Jesus answered them, My Father works even until now, and I work. What a great testimony, isn't that? Like father, like son, we might say. Moreover, this is Jesus expressing what he does. His work, the work that he is doing, is the work that the Father, our Heavenly Father, his Father, is doing doing. In John 6 40 the scripture goes on the second verse and it says and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. That's an exciting 
once again very exciting that this is the will of him he's speaking about God as heavenly father he is speaking about his father our father my father your father his father our heavenly father and he who believes on him that sent me you see the father sent the son to the lord g to uh, of the lord jesus to earth to be born of a virgin virgin mary how wonderful is that you see god's interest in you and me in our world where we live who where god had created it to be inhabited by us now how important it is to understand and recognize that God was already thinking way ahead of us as to what would take place in our lives and for us. So we have the admonition that everyone who sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. And the great thrill, the the the, the culmination of being uh, of seeing him and seeing what he is doing, seeing him in your life, seeing him work a miracle of grace in you, that you and I may not only just see that, but we will also know that he will raise us up in the last day. So it matters not. Some of the fear and anxiety I think that people are experiencing today, they're wondering what happens? Uh, w w will I die? Will, it, will, will this mean the end of my life? And I want you to be assured today it won't if you've placed your faith and trust in the living Christ and said, Lord Jesus, I give you my life to make me the person you want me to be. Well, let us look and see in this very few passages of scripture what Jesus, what the word is telling us regarding the work and the will of God. Do you know what God's will is for your life? What is his will for us? For you for me well let's see the work and will of God are synonymous that is they are one in the same now at least in this instance we're not talking about all of the work that God does but all of the work that God does has one objective. And we're going to learn about that today here. And so I want you to follow along closely. Open your Bibles to John, the fifth chapter. And we'll be looking at John 5, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 9, and chapter 10. And so you keep that Bible open and close by. So you can mark it and write down any notes that you need and find necessary. The work and will of God are synonymous. They are both the same. You know, whenever I was, uh, I, as I was preparing this, I thought back about the different times in my life when uh, I counseled many myriad people that uh, wanted to know about the will of God in their life. Maybe you've thought about that. Do you know what the will of God is for your life? Well, if you've ever had any doubts and fears that you don't know what it is, I hope by the end of our service today, our worship celebration, that you'll be able to go away here with a very fixed mind and a fixed heart on what God has for you. And so invariably, I flashed back. Yeah, it's crazy. You have, you have flashbacks whenever you get to uh, 45. Uh, 
I did at 45 and I also do it at 70. But as I puzzled over what times I might like to share with you, I flashed back to my senior year in high school. It's, uh, it, it was a time that seemed to be paramount in many people's lives. You know, whenever you're a freshman, you're not thinking about graduating. Uh, well, maybe you are, but you're, you're still saying, well, I still have three years to go. And then when you're a sophomore, you say, you know, no problem. I'm going to enjoy my, my high school years and have a great time. Uh, I'm not concerned. And then uh, you say, well, I'll get to it later. And then maybe in your junior year, you start saying, you know what? I, it's, it seems like it's moving faster than I remember it. And, uh, and I think I need to begin to sit down and talk with someone that knows anything about this so I can have some idea of what I'm going to be doing with my life. And hopefully you would say, what am I going to do with my life as it applies to God? And as God is moving in my life now, I want him to move in my life always. And then all of a sudden, you wake up one morning and guess what? You're a senior in high school. Woo-wee! You made it. I never thought I'd make it. I never thought I'd be a senior. I never thought I'd graduate. But God had different plans. And so I can remember talking with people at worship and um, uh, at school and many people had that paramount in their mind as the months began to pass moving toward the month of May the last of May would be our graduation services and they were upset and concerned because they wanted to know what they were going to do after they graduated what was their life going to consist of? And so invariably, I counseled lots of people my age. I was a senior. They were seniors. But I remember they came to me and asked me, what is God's will for my life? Please pray for me, they'd say. Pray for me that I may know God's will. And if you've ever prayed, oh God, show me your will, I'm lost, I don't know what to do, please show me your will. Stay tuned. So by the end of today's message, you'll have a great certainty of knowing what God's will is for your life. And you'll trust him for it. Yes, many people ask me, and even though I had already set my heart on deciding to do what God wanted me to do, it was not as great an issue that it seemed to be in many of my fellow classmates who were obsessed with wanting to know what God's will was for their life. Well, let's move on to John 5, 19. The scripture says, Then answered Jesus and said to them, that is saying to them, those that he was talking to, those were the Pharisees and the scribes, and they were, they were uh, uh, batting around with Jesus. They didn't like what he was doing. Jesus had just healed a man who had an infirmity for 38 years. Can you imagine that? 38 years sick? And he was going down to a place called the Pool of Bethesda. And that pool, they had a belief that an angel one day visited that, and it stirred the waters, and they, they formed a traditional idea that whenever the waters stirred and moved, whoever got down into the water first, well, bingo, they were healed. We have a lot of silly traditions like that. We have a lot, and I say silly, and, and you say, well, Gary, aren't you kind of harsh? Aren't you being short on some of these people? I think it's good. All that you have to do is simply believe, right? No, you don't simply believe. 
You believe, you put your trust and faith in the living Christ. And that belief exemplifies itself in your worship and service unto the king. So just believing, as we spoke last week, we found out that many have said that and would say, oh, I believe. And I gave you a verse out of James, the second chapter, the 19th verse, that says, and the devils believe, but tremble. The whole verse says, and so you believe, you've done well. But guess what? The devils believe and they tremble. And so it's not just the idea that we have a mental ascent of belief, but we have a heart experience of faith in Christ, in his work, his completed work for us. That is what belief is. It is actually demonstrated in a day-by-day, moment-by-moment walk of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. So invariably, he tells us there that, that the Son of Man can do nothing of himself there in 519, but what he sees the Father do. For what things he does, these also does the Son likewise. That's that belief. It is the will of God. It is the desire to do what the Father once done. You see, there was an agreement in the Godhead between the Father and the Son, and of course the Holy Spirit. And there was agreement on what would be done and what was decided? That God's will is paramount. His will is first and foremost, it's the only thing, whether or not anything else is done, decide today to do God's will. And so you say, well, but what is God's will. Stick around. I'm glad you're asking. Those are good questions because we're going to seek to answer them as we move through the text. The variety, the four scriptures that I have for you today. Whatever the Son sees the Father doing, He does what the Father does. Being in agreement is very important. Hopefully, you today are doing in agreement with what God has shown you. Don't do anything unless there's an agreement between the Father and you. You say, well, he doesn't, he doesn't understand what I'm talking about. He, does, he doesn't want to do what I want to do. Listen, it's not what you want to do that's important. In fact, you may think that it is, and you may be deceived to believe that it is, but I submit unto you, someone has messed with your head and your heart to lead you away from God and into misery. You see, whenever you decide to do your will apart from God's will, then you get out there by yourself You need the covering of God and the protection of God in your life for him not only to be leading you, but protecting you from the fiery darts of the evil one. We're going to go on to John 5.30. And here I'm going to read out of the New King James. Usually I use only the King James Bible But in this instance, I'm going to read out of the New King James, John 5.30, because it used a couple of words, 16th century words, that even though I looked them up in a variety of dictionaries and that to see if there was any uh, synonyms to that, 
I like the way the New King James said it. And so here it is. The scripture says, Jesus said, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I seek not my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. If you're going to go anywhere, you want God to be sending you. And if you are obedient to do what he wants and to go where he wants you, wherever he leads you, you will be most prosperous and blessed if you follow after him and not run ahead or lag behind or just outright refuse. Let God be God. And let God bless your heart in life. He goes on and he says in John 9, 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. And that is the truth. The night is coming, folks. No, I'm not talking about when PG&E uh, uh, sh stops stops the rolling blackouts and they're permanent. No, I'm not talking about that. But there is a darkness coming that's already here and it's starting to spread. Maybe you are anxious because of it when you put your hands in the hand of the man and trust him with your heart and life and soul it doesn't matter what happens because you see he holds you in the palm of his hands does he hold you in his palms make sure today your life is in the palm of the Lord God Almighty I must work the works of him God has a work he has a will, but he also has a work. And Jesus said, I must work the works. <laughs> Praise God, I like that. He, I, Jesus says, I must work the works of God. While it is still day. Because you see in the day, you and I can still maneuver and see. Well, you said, that's all right, Gary, I have a flashlight. And it's even a solar flashlight, and so it just it's an eternal light. Well, if you don't put it in the light source, and it's not recharged, you're going to be out there, and pretty soon you're going to be stumbling because you won't have any light. And Jesus is our light source. He goes on and he says in John 10, 25, Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Now Jesus was talking to those Again, Pharisees that were seeking to beat him up and not only cause him lots of grief by being malicious talk and spreading rumors and lies and, and, and uh, innuendos and legal uh, uh, maneuvers, all kinds of na nasty, stupid things. But you see, when you have no hope, the only hope you have is to live out with the man of sin has put in your life. Don't be a victim. Don't continue to be the victim that we became when we rebelled against our God and said, I'm not going to do your will. I have my own will and I'm going to do it. You don't want to be doing your own will because you don't know what your will holds for you. You can be certain of this when you know that the scripture says, the heart of man is deceitfully wicked. 
who can know it? The scripture indicates to us that only God knows my heart, your heart. And because our heart, we want to trust our heart. Remember, the scripture says it's deceitfully wicked. Who's it deceiving? You. Yeah, me. If I'm not careful, I will mess up and let my heart direct me when in fact that's the last thing I want to direct my life. You hear people say all the time, let your heart direct you. You, you may as well be speaking to Satan himself. Don't let your heart lead you. Your heart is deceitfully wicked. Trust God to do his will and his work in his way in his time. I told you, and you believe not, Jesus said to them, the works that I do in my Father's name bear witness of me. Is what you're doing, anything that you're doing, is it bearing witness to God? When people see and hear you do what you say is the work of God, does it lead people to want to know about God? Or does it repel them? Does it push them away? Do they say, oh my gracious, you know, I, I don't, I don't like what he is saying. You see, the scripture says, no man comes unto the Father unless the Father draws him. Unless you're drawn by Holy Spirit to the Father. And you'll know when he draws you because he'll call you by name. And he'll say, today is your day. I'm calling you to be my son or my daughter. Serve me. The last scripture I want to share with you today is found in Matthew 6, 33. For you may still ask, but you've talked about God's will and you've talked about God's work. And you've established that Jesus was doing God's will and he was doing God's work. But we still have an unanswered question and a dilemma here. What about God's will for my life? Listen to this last verse. In Matthew 6, 33, the scripture says, But seek ye, seek you, you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. You see, you arrive at what God's will is for your life. And he knows. He's the one that made you and created you. He knew what he built you for. He knows the most perfect place that you are to serve and to honor him. That wherever it is, you'll bring honor to God and lead people to him, not to you or away from God. seek first and so today settle that issue and say Lord I've been searching for me I'm gonna search for you and he says ask seek and knock and it will be opened unto you ask him and so today as we close I want you to call out upon the name of the Lord and say, Oh God, I want to come to a fulfillment of knowing your will for my life by knowing what you want to do. I want to do what you want me to do. Can you say that today? Will you say that today? I hope you will as we pray. Father, thank you for this time together. Help this my audience to do to know to discover god's will for their life in a way as though they have never known before and may as a result 
as they trust in your will, asking that your will be done, that as they find themselves busy doing what you have said, they come to the realization that you have been working out your will for their lives in them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. The Lord bless you. And we pray that you'll join us again at another worship celebration here at his pasture. God bless you and have a great day. Goodbye.